Okay, good morning, my name's Luke. We're going to be, we're gonna be recapping a little bit because how many of y'all were here the last two weeks in a row? It's pretty impressive if you can, if you can remember that. Okay, there were a lot of you that were here two weeks in a row. Two weeks ago, we talked about a fellow named Absalom. Y'all remember him? All right, who remembers who Absalom was? Okay, Bailey, do you remember? Who was Absalom? No, he wasn't a priest. Anybody remember Absalom? He was somebody's son. Samuel? Not Solomon's son. He's a relative of Solomon's. All right, Lily. Yeah, he was David's son. Absalom was David's son. And you guys remember, Absalom had to go and kill one of his brothers. Y'all remember that? Remember he did a bad thing. His brother did a bad thing, so then Absalom followed it up by doing a bad thing. So Absalom, if y'all remember from two weeks ago, Absalom had killed his brother, Abner, Abner, Abner. How many of y'all's dog is named Abner? Pretty common name, yes. How many got a guy? Yeah. You know, mine's named Juno. That's okay. But listen, Abner was Absalom's brother. Abner did a really bad thing, and so Absalom took him to a party, and while he was, he gotten drunk at the party, then Absalom had him killed by his servants which was a really bad thing because Abner was also a son of the king. What do we call a son of a king? What's his title? You can just, you can just yell, yeah, prince, right? So one prince just killed another prince, and now he's got to run because y'all know what the law says. Which one of the commandments deals with, uh, deals with this type of thing? Lucas? Well, God does, but which one of the commandments? Matthew? Thou shalt not what? Kill. Yeah, kill. Thou shalt not kill. It's one of the commandments. So... Absalom has killed Abner. He's broken one of the commandments, which means now he's in trouble, right? Okay. So it's not a good thing. Do you guys remember from a little while back that there were these places created in Israel, that God created these places in Israel called cities of refuge? Do you all remember that? You remember that? Okay. Whenever somebody had killed someone, if it was an accident or if it was in the heat of, you know, they'd gotten into an argument and somebody pushed him and he, and he tripped and fell off the stage and, and died, maybe you didn't mean to kill him, but you'd killed him, you could run to these cities of refuge, right? And, and as long as you made it to the city of refuge, you would be safe. The other, the other person's family couldn't come and, and exact revenge. Y'all remember that? These were places that God had, had told Moses and then Joshua to build in, in the land. Do y'all remember those? Do y'all remember the two generals of Saul and David when, when uh, the, the general from Saul came over to David and he told him Saul's plans so that David could take over his king and then Joab, David's general, went and found him in a city of refuge, lured him out of the city, said, come on, let's go take a walk. And they took a walk and then he killed him because he couldn't kill him inside the city. And he was avenging the death because the, Saul's general had killed David's general's brother. Y'all remember that? But that was the reason he had to lure him out of that city is because once you were in the city of refuge, you were safe. And you couldn't be harmed from people who meant to do you harm on the outside. Why do y'all think that might be important for us? Yeah, we don't kill people. We don't have cities of refuge that are physical places, but we have a city of refuge in a spiritual place, which is Jesus. Right? Je when Jesus came and died for us, he created a, a place that we can go, which is in him, and we can be safe from the enemies that are trying to attack us from outside. Right? From everything that, that the enemy uh, wants to do to harm you, God can protect you. Yeah, we have enemies. Okay, so let's get back to our story. Absalom has run away from two weeks ago, and we're going to fill in this middle gap between when Absalom ran away after he'd killed his brother and to where y'all picked up last week with Aunt Patty, where she was talking about Solomon and the, and the struggle to regain the crown once David had died. So Absalom left. He ran off. Why could Absalom not go to a city of refuge and be safe? Because he tried. What do you think? There's a, there's a tiny little uh, important detail. He wasn't protected in a city of refuge. Why not? Yeah, so, well, maybe he needed to kill him. What happened was Absalom wasn't actually the one that had killed his brother. He told his servants to. He told his servants, once my brother gets really drunk, then you have to kill him for this terrible thing that he's done. Well, so Absalom wasn't the one that had killed him, which means he was guilty 
but he wasn't protected in the cities of refuge. So he had to run off to his grandfather's house in a different country. So he runs off and he stays over there. And David says, that's it. Absalom's banished. He can't come back. Prince Absalom is gone. No more Absalom in my kingdom. Well, y'all remember who Joab was, right? Who can tell me who Joab is? Lucas. Nope, Joab wasn't a high priest. Do you remember? Yep. Shh, shh, shh. Do you remember who he was? Oh, do you remember? Not a king, Reagan. Not a prince. Joab. This is Joab guy. He's been all over the Bible for the last little while. Matthew, go sit down. Uh, all right, Madison, who was he? Uh, no, he's, he's a good guy. Come on, Samuel. Tell us who Joab was. Shh, 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 shh. What's that? Nope, he's not a prince. We got we to gotta get Joab into some more trivia. All right, Joab. Do you know, Billy? You know who he was? Go ahead. Yeah, he was a general. Joab is David's general, all right? And who knows what a general is? He's the guy that runs the army. General Mayhem, no. He's the guy that runs the army. Joab has been fighting with David since David was a, was a teenager, all right? Joab is committed to David. He's David's faithful general who fights in his army, and he's a commander of David's forces. Well, Joab is also a guy who God has put in David's life because sometimes King David doesn't make the best choices, and he doesn't think very clearly. And, and Joab helps David. Here's what Joab does. He gets a little bit tricky, all right? He gets sneaky. And he, and he calls this lady to him, this old lady. She says she was a really wise lady. And he says, okay, come here. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make a plan, all right? Because we've got to get King David doing the right thing again. All right, so come here, lady. Come here, come here, come here. Here's what I need you. I need you to put on the clothes like a black dress and a veil so it looks like you're in mourning, all right? And then you're going to go to the king, and here's what you're going to tell him. Okay, now go, 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 go. So here goes this little old lady. She's pretending to be in mourning. She's got her dress on. She's walking. Ooh, she's crying. She's got ashes on her head. Y'all know why they put ashes on their head? So everybody can tell they were in mourning, right? They weren't trying to be pretty in any way. They were crying over somebody. And then here's King David, and he's a, he's a good man. He has a good heart. And he says to her, dear lady, why are you crying? What happened? And she said, oh, king, you're amazing. You wouldn't care about a little lowly old lady. And of course, David, who's, whose heart is David's like? God's. Who said that? Yeah, well done. David has a heart like God's. And so Joab knew this, and he knew David, in fact, would care about a little old widow because God cares about a little old widow. And he says to her, of course, come and sit with the king and tell me about your problems. So they sit down together, and she tells him a story. Tells him this, this terrible story. She said, listen, my husband's passed away, and I have two sons. And my two sons were out in a field the other day, and they got to arguing while they were tending to our sheep. And my oldest son pushed down my youngest son, and he fell, and he hit his head on a rock, and he died. And now, all of our tribesmen, our family members, our cousins and everybody, they want to kill my oldest son because he killed my youngest son, and I'll have nobody left. I'll have nobody left in my life, and I'll be completely without sons. I'll have no husband, nobody to provide for me, no heir to carry on our name. And I can't believe this is happening. And the king, of course, he has a great heart, and he wants to help. And he says, lady, don't worry. Your, your cousins and kinsmen, won't, uh, they won't kill your son. That'd be crazy, right? And she's like, no, they will. They'll kill him. He's had to run off to a city refuge, and won't, he can't come back. And David said, listen. I'll make a proclamation that nobody can kill your son, because that's not right. You need to have at least one son in your family, and it was an accident anyway. It was, it was something that happened when he was very mad, and, and we all understand those things happen. And she says, she says to him, well, king, thank you for pardoning my son, but why is it that you'd pardon my son, but you won't pardon your own son, Absalom? King says, I've been tricked. Huh. Now, King, uh, King David, he's a smart fellow, right? And he says, all right, I hear you. I'll pardon my son Absalom, but answer me one thing and tell me the truth, lady. And she says, big gulp. Ooh. Yes, sir. 
Because, you know, the king can just tell you you got to die and you can die. She, she knows she's in trouble now. She says, oh boy, what is it, king? And he says, this whole thing just stinks of Joab. Sounds like something he'd do. Did Joab put you up to this? She's like, yeah, you're pretty smart. Nobody can hide from you. This was Joab's idea. And he said, well, then you hike yourself right on back to Mr. Joab and you tell him I want to see him. You bring Joab in here, tell him the king wants to talk to him. So then in comes Joab, and he comes in, and he just falls down on his face. Why do you think Joab would fall down on his face? Who wants to take a guess? Pete. What's that? Yeah, he didn't want to die. He's like, all right, I want to not die today. That's what I'd like to do. So he comes in, and he falls down on his face. He says, oh, King David, I love you. We're best buddies. Remember all the things I've done good for you, right? We're friends. David says, Joab, you tricked me. Joab says, yeah, but king, you weren't listening to reason. Absalom killed his brother because his brother did a terrible thing. Like, we all know Absalom's a little hot-headed, but you got to bring him back. He's a prince. you got to bring him back over here. So David says, all right, Joab, you go get Absalom from out at his grandfather's house, on his mom's side, not David's dad. You go get him from his grandfather's house, bring him back to Jerusalem, but he does not get to see my face. He's not part of my family, in other words. He's, he needs to stay away from the king because he's done a very bad thing. So Joab, excited, goes and gets the prince. He brings him back home to Jerusalem. Everybody, everything's going great. Until Absalom gets tired of not seeing David's face. And he's like, now this seems a little bit odd that my own dad won't come and see me or let me come see him. I wonder what's up. So he sends for Joab, that trusty old fellow. And he says, Joab, come over to my house. I want to talk to you. Joab's like, I ain't getting in trouble again for you, dude. I got you saved. I ain't getting you. I'm not, I'm not dying for you. So he just stays away. Absalom sends again. He says, no, no, come on, Joab. I want to talk with you. Joab's like, I don't want to talk with you. You're a bad influence, right? So to speak. And so David, I mean, not David, Absalom, his house and Joab's house were right next to each other. So he tells his servants, go burn down Joab's yard. That'll get his attention. So they go and they burn all his barley that was in his yard. You know, they just burn it up. Joab comes to Absalom. He's like, dude, what is wrong with you? Right? I saved you and now you're burning my stuff. What, what, what gives? And he says, yeah, I just wanted to talk with you. It's like, you are a menace. You guys have friends like this that just constantly getting in trouble, doing things they really shouldn't do? How many of you are that friend? Hmm. Hmm. You were, you were eager to raise your hand when you were talking about your friends. All of, us, all of us can get other people in trouble. You just want to try not to. All right, so stinking old Joab's barn's just been burned down. All right, shh, 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 shh. We all know who the bad friends are in here. Don't worry. They're still talking. All right, so Joab's barn's been burned down. He says to Absalom, dude, what is wrong with you? What do you want me to do? I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to be around you. And at this point, I don't want to be your neighbor anymore. Absalom says, I want to see my dad's face. Joab says, I'll talk to him, as long as you promise not to burn my house down next time. So he goes and he talks to him. He says, King David, you need to see Absalom. Y'all need to set this thing right. Like, talk to him. He's a young prince. He's all the time getting in trouble. You got to talk to him, man. So David says, all right, bring Absalom in. Absalom comes, and Absalom falls down on his face when he sees David. Why do y'all think that might be? Yeah, he does not want to die as well. And he's pretty much been a troublemaker, so he's got it coming. And what does David do? Do y'all think Absalom deserved to be punished? Who think? All right, raise your hand if you think Absalom deserves to be punished for what all he's done. I'm going to raise my hand. Because that guy, he's a troublemaker all the way around. He doesn't kill him. Yeah, I'm sometimes a troublemaker too. So look, Absalom comes and he falls down on his face because he doesn't want to be killed. What do y'all think the king does? What do y'all think he does? He doesn't kill him. King David goes to him. He picks him up off the floor, raises his head up, and he gives him a kiss. Right? Which was a way of saying, I love you and I care about you. Now let me stop the story real quick. Beep. To focus on something. How many of you in here, when Pastor Bob asks you every morning or every Sunday morning if you're a liar, how many of you raise your hands? Yeah, most of you, because it's a fun game we play. But how many of you in here know that you've actually done things that, that deserve punishment because you've, you've done things that were against God's will and against his law? Y'all know lying is one of them. There's a whole law, and all of us deserve 
All of us deserve at some point to be punished by God the King, right? And so we should. At every opportunity, we should fall down before God. We should raise our hands before Him, but we should ask Him for forgiveness. We should say, look, I know I've messed up a lot of times. I know I've messed up, but I'm begging you for mercy. And y'all know what the king does? Y'all know what God does? He comes to us, and he lifts us up, and he gives us a kiss. And he says, I love you. That's all he wants. He wants for us to be apologetic. He wants for us to be humble. And then he really wants to bless us and raise us back up, okay? It's an important thing that showing that David has the same heart as the heart that God has. And when you guys come up to the altar, and you're praying, and you're thanking God, hey, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew Colon. But when you come to the altar, and you're focused on God, and you're praying, and you're asking him for forgiveness, he's coming to you in a spiritual way, like David did to Absalom, and he gives you a kiss. Okay? He wants to give you kisses. He wants to give you love. And I hope all of you understand that that's an amazing thing. The king does not have to do that. All right. So let's move on. Now Absalom's back in. He's a prince again. He's, he's like, yes, I've been forgiven. I'm good. And he says, Absalom was a beautiful man. It said he didn't have any blemishes on his body. No blemishes anywhere. Right? It means he doesn't have like freckles or spots or scars. He was, his body looked perfect and he had long flowing hair. That he only cut his hair one time a year. One time a year he got his hair cut and it weighed five pounds. How many of you are carrying a Bible around? Or how many of you ever picked up like a gallon of milk? Anybody ever picked up a gallon of milk? Right, that weighs eight pounds. His hair, when he cut it, weighed almost as much as a gallon of milk. All right? So my guy has huge amounts of hair. He's got like a lion's mane. He only cuts it once a year, and he's this beautiful guy. He's really handsome. All right? No blemishes. Perfectly chiseled jaw. Very handsome fellow, right? So Absalom, because he's just a troublemaker, he decides that he's going to start winning the people of Israel over to his team. He wants to be king now. Even after all he's done, and after all David's forgiven him for, Absalom wants to be king. So David says to Absalom, you're back in the family. Absalom says to David, I'm going to take the kingship. He didn't say it, but that's what he starts doing. So he starts winning people. He starts charming people. He starts telling them, oh, I'll be such a better king if I was king. For four years, he spends winning the hearts of the people, giving them gifts and buying their favor and stuff, right? For four years, he does this, and then, bam, he pounces on a plane. He goes to David. Absalom's not a very sweet guy. And he goes to David. He's like, David, I mean, dad, king, king, dad. Hey, buddy. Hey, listen, I'm going to go up to Hebron and I'm going to worship the Lord up there. It's a mountain up in the north of uh, Israel. He says, I, because when I was out at, in the wilderness running away from, uh, from everybody, I made a promise to God that if he'd bring me back to Jerusalem, I'd go up there and worship God. So I'm going to go up there and worship God. Okay, do you want to go? And David's like, no, I don't want to go to Hebron. That, that does not sound fun. You go ahead and fulfill your oath. And he says, all right, well, it's a long journey up there, so I'm going to take some of the people with me. David said, yeah, fine, go ahead, do whatever. So Absalom goes and he starts grabbing people, people from David's own, own kingdom, right? People that David trusts, and he says, hey, come with me, we're going up to Hebron. And he grabs this one guy, I've got to read his name, because you won't believe me, Ahithophel, Ahithophel. All right, this is a real name, this is a real person. And Ahithophel is an old guy, I don't know how old, but probably at least as old as Pastor Bob, okay? He's old. And, and Ahithophel is wise. Yeah, Ahithophel. Yeah. So Ahithophel is a very wise counselor, okay? He's a very wise counselor of King David's. And Absalom knows that what Ahithophel says is just as good as if God said it. He's a very wise person. That's what the Bible says about Ahithophel. He's a very wise man. So Absalom says to Hithophel, hey, come with me up to Hebron. He doesn't tell him what's going on, but come with me. We're going up here to worship God. And Hithophel says, yeah, no problem. I'll go along. So they get up there all the way in the north. Absalom's got this big army raised, and he says to all these other guys that were part of David's kingdom, he says to them, okay, guys, here's the thing. I'm taking over. I'm the new king now. Well, now he's got them stuck. Because if they say, no, we're going to keep you know, uh, following your dad, King David, who's the real king, then he just kills them. So they're like, oh, geez, what are we going to do? We're way up here in the mountains. 
we're going to die if we don't follow him, so we've got to follow Absalom. So they all team up with Absalom. Well, now Absalom has this huge army and most of the government and everybody, and they start heading back towards Jerusalem. And they're going to go kill King David, and they're going to take the throne. And this is Absalom. This is the guy who David forgave, gave a kiss to. This is his son. He just heads down there to go kill him. Well, thankfully, this one priest runs ahead of everybody, and he goes and he warns King David. <laughs> Uh, because they wanted power. So they go running down there. They're like, King David, you got to run, quick, because Absalom's coming. He's trying to take over the kingdom. Go, go, go. David packs everybody up in a hurry, takes all his wives, he takes his kids, the little ones, and he says, let's go. Whoosh. And they go running. And there's this one guy who stays behind. Actually, it doesn't stay behind. His name's Hushai. Hushai. Who's shy? He was shy. Yeah. And so he goes running after him, and he says, King David, you got to let me go with you. But he's an old fella. And he's like, <gasps> you got to let me go. King David says, stop. Who's shy? Listen, here's the thing. Absalom now has, what was the really smart guy's name? Y'all remember? The really wise guy? Ahithophel, Ahithophel, right? He says, David says to Hushai, he says, Hushai, come here. I need, I, need to, I need you to work with me here because Absalom's got Ahithophel, and he's so wise. If Absalom talks to Ahithophel, he'll kill me and, and we'll be dead. And I won't have any chance of winning because I don't have any access to wisdom like Ahithophel has. So, Hushai, here's what I need you to do. Go back. Tell Absalom you're going to join him. You served me. You're going to serve him. But here's what I need you to do. Everything that Ahithophel says to do, you've got to say to do the opposite. And you've got to get King Absalom to not follow Ahithophel so I can live for a little while. Hushai says, I'll do it, king. I'll serve you. So he goes back. Absalom comes into the city, takes over. He's king over Israel. And David runs across the Jordan River into the, into the wilderness to go hide. Along the way, he meets a guy who's named Ziba. Ziba. Y'all can use that one if you want to for your next dog's name. But Ziba was a servant of the house of Saul. And he came out to David and he brought him raisin cakes and bread and he brought donkeys and he said, man, I see you're running. I see you're leaving. Let me supply you with stuff so you guys can go. I want to make your journey easy. David says, Ziba, thank you so much for doing this. I'm going to give you half of what was Saul's because Mephibosheth, that was Saul's grandson who had the broken feet. You all remember him? He stayed behind in Jerusalem. He couldn't travel. So he was staying back there. He says, Ziba, thank you for this gift. You probably saved all of our lives. You get half of what was Saul's. Ziba had like 29 sons, so he needed a big piece of property. All right. Then there's this guy. His name's Shimmy. Shimmy. All right. Shimmy, he also was one of Saul's cousins, and he's an old fella. He's a crotchety old fella, probably sitting on his porch in his rocking chair saying, hey, stay off my lawn. I don't know what he's doing. But he takes these rocks. He's got a big pile of rocks, and he's throwing them at David. Yeah, he's like, yeah, you better run. You stole the kingdom from Saul, my cousin. Whoop, now look at you, running like a vagabond. He's throwing rocks at him, and he's cursing him. He's saying, yeah, get out of here. You're no good for nothing anyway. Right? Yeah, probably. So he's like, just, just being a nuisance. One of David's men, he's like, pulls out his sword. He said, uh, you want me to kill him? And David said, listen, guys, he's raining curses down on us. But what if God sent him out here to curse us? We're not going to kill somebody that may be sent by God. We're cursed. We had to leave Jerusalem. Let's just endure it. And he says he followed him along throwing rocks at him, yelling at him, calling him names and stuff. So David says, I mean, no, he's not acting out of anger. He's acting out of humility, which is a really important thing because a lot of times when people come to hurt us and they call us names or they hit us with things, we want to respond with anger. We want to respond by trying to beat them up or calling them names back. Shh, 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 shh. We respond by, by calling them things back. But the truth is, that person very likely is just hurt. And you should listen to what God's telling you to do, which is not to respond by hurting them, which is once again what David does. He shows he has the heart of God. Okay? So David, David goes running off into the wilderness. Absalom gets to Jerusalem, takes over, and he goes chasing him. All right? And he goes running out there. But first, let's get to a fun little battle that doesn't involve any fighting. All right? We got on one hand... I'm going to introduce you guys to the players. we got a really wise guy who's now serving Absalom. What's his name? Uh, he, 
Ahithophel. Ahithophel. He's over here. Ahithophel. And on this side, we have a guy who's shy. Who's shy? Yeah, that's him. Who's shy? Okay. So we have, and who's shy is working for David. Ahithophel's working for Absalom, right? And Absalom says to Ahithophel, he says, Ahithophel, you want to just call him Phil for short? Yeah, he says, Phil, come here. What should I do? How should I go kill King David? Phil says, well, this seems pretty easy. You got the army. You got the chariots. You got the horses. He's on foot with a bunch of women and children. Ride him down right now. Leave immediately while he's still trying to cross the river and go kill them all. Absalom says, yeah, yeah, this seems like a good idea. But we better ask Hushai. Hushai, you old, you old fella. Come here. Hushai comes over. He says, what should I do? He says, Absalom, listen. You go running down there with a bunch of horses. You know David and his mighty men. Those guys are fighters. They're going to they're get on a hill with their backs to a cliff somewhere, and they're going to kill you guys. Not to mention, what's Israel going to think when you and a whole army go and fight a bunch of women and children, and you wipe them all out? They're going to be like, oh, Absalom's a weak king. He's a coward. What you need to do, wait till David gets to the other side of the river, raise up an army, go over there, siege his city, and kill him as a king. Absalom's like, and then you'll, you'll gain glory for yourself. This is what Hushai says. Absalom says, yeah, glory. I like that. Let's gain some glory for myself. I don't know if that's how Absalom talked, but that's what I figure. So he says, all right, let's wait. Let's wait. We're going we're gonna to do what Hushai says. That's good. Man, I'm going to have glory. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win. Everything's going to be great. Ahithophel realizes what's being done, and he realizes he's on the wrong side and that he'd stopped worshiping the Lord and instead had started following a guy who was not worshiping God. And so he goes and he dies. He kills himself because he realizes he's made a big mistake. So now Hushai is the only counselor, and that's good news for David. So now, once David gets over, gets set up, everything, here comes Absalom with his army. David's raised about 8,000 men. Absalom comes after him with like 40,000 men, so it's a little bit uneven. And they come down, but David, he's old. He's getting old, and he can't run anymore. He can't go and fight. So Joab, y'all remember who Joab is? It's okay, man. Y'all remember who Joab is? He's the general. He says to David, all right, David, listen, you got to stay here. Because if we go out there and fight, it doesn't matter if they kill all of us, as long as you're still alive. But if they kill just one of you, all of us are dead. So you stay here. We're going to go out and fight. And David says to him one more time, he says, please, Joab, please, 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 please. Don't kill Absalom. Be easy on him. Have mercy on him. If you catch him in battle, don't kill him. Now, y'all remember pretty boy Absalom, right? What, what was it that when he cut it weighed five pounds? You can just yell it out. Yeah, his hair, right? He's got long flowing hair. He looked pretty. Well, he's riding a donkey into battle, and it says he rides into this forest, and he rides under an oak tree, and the hair on his head catches in a branch, and, it, and his donkey keeps running, and he's hanging by his hair. Right? So he's hanging there, trying to get down, trying to pull himself up onto a branch, but he's stuck. Okay? Well, David's guys, they surround him while he's hanging there in a tree, and they're like, well, look at this. The very guy we're trying to catch hanging in a tree. Somebody go get Joab. Because everybody heard David tell Joab, be easy on Absalom. So they say, well, go get Joab. We'll see what he wants to do. Joab comes riding up on his horse, and he says, <laughs> look at this fool hanging there in the tree. He says, kill him. And the guys are like, we're not killing him. David said not to kill him. Joab says, y'all crazy. I am done with this fool causing problems in Israel. And so Joab takes his spear, and he kills Absalom. And then they, all, they pull him down, and they throw him in a pit, and they go, and they tell King David. Well, remember, David was back at the city where they were staying. Right? Y'all remember that? He had to stay behind. So Joab picks a guy and he says, hey, why don't you go and tell David what happened? And he told him exactly what to tell him. And there was a priest, one of the sons of Zadok, and he says to, he says to Joab, I'd also like to run and go tell King David because I want to tell him the real story. Joab says, go ahead. So they go running. They both meet David. They tell him the story. David weeps. He goes into mourning. He tears his clothes. He put ashes on his head, and he mourns, and he says, oh, Absalom, my son. And he does this for three months. Finally, Joab goes to him. Y'all remember I said earlier, Joab sometimes helps get David back into the right mind. Joab goes to him. He says, David, you got to adjust, man. You're mourning over somebody who tried to kill you while all your guys who went into battle for you and died for you are over here acting like you're acting like they're criminals. You got to adjust. You have to be a good man. 
So David gets up and he says, you're right, all my guys who fought for me, thank you. So David goes back in, and this kind of completes the story from where you were last week. David goes back into Israel. There's some fighting. There's a guy named Sheba who leads a rebellion. He wants to be king. But overall, David becomes king, and he preps the, the end of the book of 2 Samuel, preps you for the fact of what Aunt Patty went over last week, where Solomon, they're trying to take over. And David writes a song. It's pretty neat. I'm not going to sing it for you. Uh, my singing voice died somewhere in the uh, late 80s. Um, and so they, uh, but David writes a song, and then it goes through David's mighty men. The last part of it, he goes through his mighty men, and he says, David had 30 mighty men that each one killed major people, huge giants in battle. They were really strong, and they were like his bodyguard. Okay? So then it says, as David was dying, the last thing that happens is David made a big mistake, and God sent an angel of death to go down and start killing people in Israel. And David prays, and he says, God, please don't. And David looks up on this hill where there's a, a, a threshing floor, which is like a barn, and he says, and he sees the angel of death getting ready to kill somebody, and he prays to God. He says, please stop. God said, go where you see that angel, buy that pla plaque of land, and build an altar there. And this is a threshing floor of a guy, and so David goes and he buys the land, he builds the altar, and that piece of land is where Solomon ends up building the temple. Okay? It's called Aruahiah's threshing floor. Okay? I don't know if that's how you say his name, but it's something like that. The threshing floor where Solomon builds the temple. Okay? So that kind of gets you caught up to what we went over the review videos from last week, and we've got now you kind of understand why David, he was tired, but all of his sons keep fighting, trying to win the, the crown. Now here's something really important that I want to say to you guys, and then we're going to worship a little bit, and hopefully y'all pray a little bit, and then your parents will come pick you up. Very often in your life, especially as a young person, you're going to run into opportunities where if you were to just be bad, you could take something that you really want, like Absalom did, right? But it is not worth it. That's what Saul did as well. And it is not something that God blesses. What God really wants you to do is he wants you to serve him. He wants you to be submissive to your parents, where you're obedient, where you obey what they say. All right? He wants you to be kind to your siblings, to your friends. Don't be like Absalom. And do have a heart like David. Even when people have hurt you, still have a heart like God that's going to go to them when they ask for forgiveness and is going to forgive them, okay, and be kind. So this morning, I think probably every one of you has at least something in your life that you've done that you could do to ask God for forgiveness for. And I would say go and talk to him. You can talk to him in your seat. You can come up here and pray to him and let him come to you and give you a kiss like David did to Absalom, okay? So we're going to pray a little bit if you want, or we're going to worship a little bit. If you want for Mr. David or Pastor Bob or I to pray with you, we'll be happy to. But otherwise, let's worship a bit and let's be men like David. Men and women.